I didn't know that level design takes so long. Now, you may be thinking, Sweeness, why don't you just use free assets like Quixel's Mega Scans? They have high quality rocks and stuff. And you would be right, and in a sense that's what I am doing. But, just throwing a bunch of random assets together could lack visual cohesion, and I don't want to mix various styles and quality levels. So, I've been taking the time to add my touches and changes to make assets look similar and perform well. You may also be thinking, Sweetness, why don't you just focus on gameplay first instead? After all, graphics aren't everything, and you are right. I just feel like doing it this way. Since my devlog zero video, I've been learning how to create the landscape material, how the various foliage systems work, and creating or adjusting meshes and textures so that they both look and perform well. I have also learned how to use virtual textures in the virtual height field mesh. In this devlog I'm going to go over the overall layout of the map and how it relates to gameplay and the grass as they are both the most complete aspects of the level. Unlike traditional tower defense games, the level approach I'll be using will be closer to traditional RDS games where you will have an open area. In my level, the player's base, which will be targeted by enemies, will be in the center and during each round enemies will approach from any of the inflow areas, with more enemies spawning where inflows are more tightly packed. This means that enemies could come from a direction where the player has built up lighter defenses, adding a degree of difficulty. Enemies may attack towers and so there are elevated cliffside zones where towers may be placed to take cover as well as to create choke points. I've probably put way too much time into just the grass but boy, it does look good. The subtle wind looks good, and it performs well. The grass placement utilize is the new Unreal Engine procedural content generation tool, and yes, I'm now using 5.2. Let's look at the mesh and then the material which will be available via Gum Road. Links in the description. The mesh is relatively simple. It is made in Blender by creating one blade using a handful of vertices and duplicating it with random z-axis rotations. The UVs are set like this. As I don't intend on using a texture for the grass, there's no point. We won't ever get close enough to a single blade so we might as well generate the colors and for that, I use the UVs. Since I'm using the UVs to procedurally create the color, I feed them into a linear gradient and then I set some variables for easy access later. I take into consideration that the blade can be thicker along the center as well as adding a bit of brightness to the tip and darkness to the base of the blade. There's also a bit of world space variation to try and add a slight color change to break it up a bit. The biggest impact on making it look good is the translucency. I ripped parts of the translucency from the Mega Scan's default materials and adjusted till I got a look I like. The wind uses world position offset in the material to animate the vertices. This is a very efficient way of animating many blades of grass but it can still suck up resources. To optimize this, there's a hard cutoff distance that disables the WPO altogether. This is set using the PCG tools. The material function gave me enough data to play with where I just use the channels to move the grass in the X or Y directions, with any change in direction also affecting the height of the blade so it looks like it's leaning over rather than just shifting in a direction whilst also affecting the tip of the blades much more than the bottom. This took a lot of tweaking to get it looking just right. Part of the trick was remapping the output of the wind material function from 0 and 1 to minus 1 and 1. This is so that the grass can move both forwards and backwards as though there were a sudden low pressure or lack of wind but keeps the grass in motion. I also added a bit of noise to the wind to add further variation. That's all I have so far. In the next update, I hope to have the landscape done with trees and rocks and other bits and bobs here and there to make it more alive and believable. After that, 
I will start on the gameplay, developing a vertical slice of the entire game. That's it for now. If you enjoyed this content and wish to see more, you know the drill. Till next time, thank you for watching.